Hello there Leos, welcome to your reading. Now when I was meditating on this month's reading for you, I was trying to do um, come up with two images, okay? Uh, the only thing that flashed through um, when I meditated was a number four. And the way it was written, it was written in the reverse. So you know, number four is like this, right? I saw it going the other way. And from a numerological uh, perspective, the number four deals with stability, it deals with foundations, and it deals um, almost with um, a very, very strong sense of uh, personal integrity as well as personal responsibility. It's the, the table with the four legs, okay? It's like the epitome or the apex of stability in, in some areas of your life. And um, traditionally, number four people are quite spiritual. They have healing hands, healing touch. They're naturally empathic. And they have the ability to um, soothe, you know, scared animals, to soothe children, um, distressed children, or even scared children, or children that have, might have, um, I'm hearing colicky or even children that um, that are emotionally like distressed okay so number four people are natural healers and they might be in a healing profession in some capacity the thing about number four people is that they're not innately emotional people but they do care about humanity in a um, as a collective okay they're they're a little bit more detached but they care about humanity they care about the state of the world and they will never ignore a crying child they will never ignore a distressed animal that is um, starving or that is chained up and in a way to uh, number four people their major major fear is about growing old is about being uh, in a position where they're not independent or they're not self-sufficient and they might need other people to take care of them so that's one of the major major um major phobias of number four they don't want to grow old they don't want to be reliant on other people they don't especially want to be put in any type of a situation where they can't take care of themselves okay so i feel like you know all the number four energies the the good side and the shadow side is really coming up in this spread and especially because the four showed up in the reverse it indicates to me more of the uh, shadow side of the number four coming up for you to kind of reorient your life okay so the whole concept about you know many of you um about you know being a healer being an empath being um a light worker and being in a position where you are soothing people um you're taking care of distressed people you're taking care of you're you're taking care of people who are in dire need okay many of you might be in the healthcare profession might be in the healing profession might even be in an academic environment where you are somewhat trying to come up with a way to uplift humanity okay this could be i feel like you know in the healthcare profession in public health in epidemiology in even doing research that will really really transform the way that people look at their health the way people look at um, or views you know their ability to be self-sufficient or to even you know learn to take care of themselves learn to take better care of their bodies learn to be conscientious about what they're putting in their body so that when they're into their old age they're still functioning and they're still operating at their best because they would have taken care of the vessel that houses their energy and their life force okay so i feel like the whole concept about um really taking care of yourself being aware of your mortality being aware of your human limitations even and working with it not against it you know so like not overexerting yourself taking better care of what you're putting in your body being mindful of your diet being mindful of what you want your body to do for you so that when you're older you can still you know you you can still enjoy life without you know physical ailments okay so i feel like many of you might have had a recent uh, health scare or a recent wake-up call when it comes to treating your body at almost like as a temple um i'm also seeing as well the concept about being able to be self-sufficient and to really take care of yourself 
the number four people, excuse me, let me just pull up my sleeves. The number four people are um, the worker bees of the numerology world. Um, they are the last people usually to leave the office and they're usually the first people to come into the office, okay? So day in and day out, their co-workers, their supervisors, their boss, knows that if they want something done and they want something done right, they give it to the number four people. Mainly because they just don't quit until things are done properly. They don't mind putting in, you know, clocking in extra hours, even if they don't get paid for it. They don't mind doing that. And especially, they don't mind being the last person to leave the office because to them, personal responsibilities, taking care of things, um, and you know, they don't do it in a way where they're looking for recognition. They do it in a way where it needs to be done. It was assigned to somebody, it's assigned to me, or somebody needs to take care of it. And you know, I happen to be here, so I'm gonna get it done. And so they're really, really hardworking. So the energy of hard work really paying off for you. I feel like, you know, the, the hard work, the dedication, all of your efforts, all of the things that you're, um, you're working really, really diligently at all of these things at the time that you're doing them, you're just like, I'm going through the motions. I'm, I'm doing it out of a sense of responsibility. But what you don't realize is that it helps to ground you. It helps to anchor you. It helps to really build up that foundation for you so that you can be seen as a major force to be reckoned with in your professional life. In your work environment, you're admired and, you know, even um, looked up to, like heavily looked up to, admired, and even intimidated by the people who are working in your midst, who are your colleagues, mainly because you're kind of like that energizer bunny. You keep going, you don't get fatigued, you don't get tired, and you're not one to keep scores like, oh, I did this yesterday, so, you know, you need to do it the next day. You're not one to do that. You're just, you know, duty calls, I need to get it done, so I'm going to get it done. And as a result of it, it's very, very foundationally um, good for you to work with this energy, not to give up, do what you feel you need to do, regardless of who's watching, okay? So I feel like there's a, a lot of lessons here coming in regarding hard work, regarding paying it forward and um, really grounding yourself and just know that hard work will always, always pay off. It might not pay off in, in the immediate moment in time, but months and years and further down the line, it's really going to come home. The good karma will really come home and roost for you, okay? Um, so that's, that's what I'm feeling here. For many of you, you might be, you know, exhibiting the number four energy in your work environment where people have a great deal of respect for you. They also see everything that you're doing and it inspires them to want to achieve more. It in inspires them to almost like want to be like you and want to, you know, it, it's almost like they're, they're trying to figure out where the source of your endless energy comes from what really how how you recharge how you can keep going without you know feeling fatigued okay and they're almost trying to figure out where that source of um that that fountain of youth comes from as well and i'm hearing the the fountain of youth mainly because i feel like for many of you you don't get tired and your your energy is very sprightly it's very optimistic, it's very buoyant. And another thing is that number four symbol um, is also very similar to the symbol of Jupiter. And Jupiter deals overall with optimism. It deals with luck, it deals with expansion, and it deals with the ease in which we navigate problems in our lives. We don't let them bog us down for too long. We kind of blast through it. We pick ourselves up of our own bootstraps and then we keep going. So a lot of people are looking at you in awe and admiration and wondering where your source of energy, drive, determination, optimism, and, and abundance is. Where is that coming from? And it's not apparent to them. And I feel like, you know, for many of you in public, you have a very uh, dignified and regal way in which you express yourself. And I feel like, you know, you, you allow yourself to be vulnerable to the extent where 
um, when you're around people that you love and people that you trust 100%, that's when you let the vulnerability shows. But when it comes to you know acquaintances and just random people in your environment, they see you as somebody who's like a pillar of strength and stability, like you know that the the table with the four legs. They don't see you buckle under pressure, and the table with the flat surface. It is able to withstand a lot of weight. It's able to hold and contain a lot of things. So I'm also seeing, you know, kind of like that reservoir, deep reservoir of knowledge, and not only just, you know, technical knowledge, but also spiritual knowledge. So I feel like people see you as being very, very strong, very, very stable. You don't buckle under pressure, and you never need to ask other people for help. Okay. Um, let me get two more cards for you. Okay, so we have two. Which I feel brings me to the point of the reading. Because, um, like I said, the number four comes out almost like in the reverse. Okay, I'm seeing it kind of like a reflection of it in the mirror where it's, um, it's transposed in the opposite direction. So what that means is there will be situations, a lot of situations, a lot of uh, troubleshooting, a lot of fires that you have to put out in your environment, okay? You have to bring your A game, um, the very, very best of yourself to the later part of this month, okay? So this is going to be roughly from March 15th until the March, the end of March. And when we shift, from March 15th until the end of March, we're kind of uh, smearing over <laughs> into um, into the time of Aries. And I was laughing because um, when I said smearing, I see this kid with like a crayon and going wild on the walls, okay? So many of you might have a little bit of like boisterous children, okay? A little bit naughty, might, might be getting in trouble. So there's like just a lot of... Um, fires that you have to put out, you know, either in the household environment or even in your work environment, but you're handling it with such grace. So needless to say, this card really, really drew me to it. So we have here the Ten of Wands, and the Ten of Wands is dealing with a lot of responsibilities, okay? Having a lot on her plate. Um, she's got that other wand on the ground, and if she were to, you know, bend down and pick that up, she's going to drop everything that she's holding. So it's a situation where you kind of need to, you know, really prioritize what's really important right now. Maybe I need to take care of everything here first before I pick up that last project. Maybe I need to learn to take care of myself first before I start helping others. Maybe I need to take these wands home, set it down so that it's, it has a place in my house first before I come back for this other thing, okay? Um, or maybe I just need to be strategic about it, put everything down, kind of um, get a string or a cord or some piece of cloth and bundle everything up so that I can carry them in an easier manner. So I feel like you're shifting priorities, you're shifting your work around, you're moving things around as well as arranging things so that they're more manageable for you. So I, I definitely feel like, you know, the later part of this month is about the expending of your energy, okay? Where are you wasting energy? Where are you expending it in the right channel? And how can things and processes and procedures and ways of doing be um, made so that they are more effective, so that they are more streamlined, so that we can work smart rather than work hard, okay? Um, I'm also seeing as well there, I'm getting a, an energy of somebody in your environment that you are trying really hard to please, okay? And this person comes up here as the King of Pentacles. And um, for those of you who, who has this person in your work environment, this is usually like, um, this is somebody that I would call like, um, they see the value in people, okay? They know that you're very hardworking. They know that you're very honest, straightforward, and they know that when they give you a specific task, that you're going to be able to get it done. So they don't have any, any complaints about your work ethics. They don't have any complaints about you as a worker. And if you were working under this person, um, they know that 
you take care of everything that you're supposed to. So they're not, you know, looking over your shoulders, micromanaging you, or they're they're not checking up on you every five minutes to make sure that you're actually at your desk doing your work. They have a great deal of trust in you. And because they have such a great deal of trust in you, this is not somebody who's very verbose when it comes to congratulations, okay? They're not gonna come by your desk and be like, oh, nice work today, or you did a really good job on this account, or you handled this client really, really well, or you did a really good job with you know, the, the uh, quarterly summaries or with your reports. Um, compliments don't come easily with this person. And I feel like the way in which you know that they trust you is when they give you important tasks for you to finish. It's because they trust you they wouldn't give these tasks willy-nilly to any slacker in the office. They come to you with the best because they know you're capable of doing the best, okay? And so I almost feel like you don't need to go out of your way to um, kind of um, impress anybody or prove anything to anybody, okay? And you especially don't need to, you know, uh, keep yourself so, so, so... We have the devil and the ten of wands, and this is like, you know, um, responsibility, being a workaholic. Like I mentioned before, the number four people are like the workaholic of the numerology world. This is ultimately uh, workaholism. Letting, not having that good um, personal life and work-life balance, feeling a little bit like overwhelmed, kind of like you're sinking or you're um, drowning with a lot of responsibilities, okay? And so you don't need to, if you feel like, oh, I need to make a good impression, I just started a job, I need to prove myself, you don't have to do any of that because the people around you, especially that superior, is totally aware that you are capable of doing a lot, but they're also aware that you're hardworking. So you don't need to go out of your way to prove this to anybody. So take it easy a little bit when we are at the later part of um, March, mainly because we're still in that retrograde energy, okay? The Mercury retrograde is from March 5th, I believe, until the March 23rd. And so after Mar March 23rd, I feel like, you know, if we're dashing off assignments and, and if we're just trying to get things done, most of those things will be bounced back to us for fixing. So it's really, really important that we look carefully at our workflow and we can figure out how we can improve things rather than piling things on when it's not necessary okay so that's what I'm feeling here and um, I'm also feeling as well for many of you you have really made it okay hard work paid off in a big 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 way and I have um, this card here the magician the magician is mastering a skill and what this card denotes to me is it's somebody who's very well-rounded okay um, he has all the suit of the, um, the he has all the suit so the the sword the wands the pentacles and the cups okay so he's master the the four elements and so I feel like for many of you, you're very well-rounded you have a multitude of skills so I see people who have uh, had a lot of jobs, you know, as teenagers, okay? You might have been a cashier, you might have worked in fast food, you might have been a waitress, you might have been a hostess, you might have been a receptionist. You had a myriad um, of skills under your belt. And so when you go out into the world as, you know, in your 20s, okay? And you're trying to find like part-time jobs or you're trying to figure out like, you know, what career path should I go? You have a lot of things to go off of. You have a packed resume, a stacked resume. And I also feel like a lot of the times, one of the dangers about you know being so well-rounded and so versatile is that it can make it very difficult for us to really commit to, decide upon, and stick to a specific career path. Because we feel like one career might bring us a lot of financial abundance, for example, but it's not in, uh, intellectually stimulating. Another career might be very, very intellectually stimulating, but it's really not allowing us to, you know, help people. 
And then, such as you know, doing research in a laboratory, like day in and day out, you're you're simulated, but you don't feel like you're applying that knowledge or you're helping people in a phys physical, tangible sense. And then another job that might be really, really, really exciting. It allows us to travel. So, for example, being like a sales rep, and it brings a lot of money. But it's lacking in that emotional abundance because it's hard to maintain a relationship when you're constantly on the go, when you're, you know, sleeping in the hotel rooms every night, when you're constantly traveling. So I feel like you feel there is a job out there that is going to encompass all of these elements. Not only is it going to soothe you, you know,、uh, emotionally. Um, it's also going to bring financial abundance. It's going to be intellectually stimulating. It's going to be exciting. Where day in and day out is not the same routine. So many of you are out there looking for this big job that will fulfill you 100%. I see a lot of internet-based types of、uh, job search. Okay, this is like. Going on LinkedIn, seeing what other people are up to, looking at the industries that they have、um, collected experiences with, and I see you as well.、Um, you know, going online, going to these big organizations like the nonprofit, the the company website, and looking to see what careers、um, they have, as well as what job listings are available. So I feel like you know you believe there is something out there that is created specifically for you, where you can continue to develop not only one skill but like all of the skills that you bring to the table, and then you want it to be like a perfect, perfect, perfect match. If you are in the process of、uh, looking for work, I feel that many of you are really, really your. Some of you could be at the top of your career. You've already mastered everything, and the work itself. I'm hearing there's a lot of babysitting. Okay, so I don't know if you're taking care of children physically, or you feel like you know my job title is a specific way. It was advertised like this, but I feel like I'm picking up a lot of people's slack, and then as a result of it, you don't want to be in an environment where you stop growing. It's like everybody's growing, and、um, you're doing a lot of like legwork, and you're you're you know cleaning up after people, and you just feel like there's more to life than this. There's there's there's、um, more to my capabilities, and this job is really limiting. You know my ability to learn more, my ability to expand. So I'm looking elsewhere. So I see many of you looking elsewhere. Many of you as well moving forward and trying to find something. That encompasses, you know, everything that you love, and that will be more in alignment with you. This is going to be on the horizon for you. Okay, we have the wheel of fortune, things turning around, and、um, kind of like I usually think of this as like a, a door opening or a portal. Okay, and the stars have to align in order for the portal to open. It, it's sort of like you know those. Um, um, It's like those the the sacred space, and I'm getting a lot of you know、um, Indiana Jones like references, where things have to all be aligned in order for a specific situation to happen, or a specific thing to open. Like the the time is not ready yet, and when it does open for you, it's really going to free you from this mental prison here, with the Eight of Swords. It's sort of like feeling stuck, feeling like I don't even know which direction I want to go. I want to go in, having a lot of thoughts, having a lot of what is, having a lot of like,、um, having a lot of options, having a lot of ideas, and not having anything concrete or not having, you know, that、um, that mentor that can really. Help you find a straightforward career path, even. So I feel like something is going to be open for you. And what they're saying is, in the past, if you have settled for situations because it met a specific criteria, but it didn't meet all of the criteria, it was you know financially stable, so I I, I did it or I was in it. Or the other one, it was you know intellectually stimulating. But it wasn't very stable financially. So something is coming into the picture that will honestly, truly meet all of your criteria. And you might have thought that you know this situation would never come around, but I feel like it is going to be in the picture for you. 
and wait around for it. And especially during this Mercury and retrograde period, um, I would say after the 23rd of March, I do feel this, these doors, these portals opening up for you, okay? Um, in the love relationship sector as well, I, I feel like you have two options on the table here. I don't see people juggling. I don't see people, you know, cheating or anything like that. Um, I have an air sign. So this is air energy. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And then I have an earth sign. A Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. So, first of all, let's talk about this air sign. Um, they're linked up with a magician, okay? So they're incredibly, incredibly, incredibly intelligent. Very, very intelligent. You can, like, um, stay up all night talking to them. You don't mind because they're just a joy to talk to. They have a lot of ideas. They have a lot of plans. They're just um, really, really fun to talk to. They're very inspiring to be with. And they're so intelligent that they kind of um, expand your knowledge base, okay? And I feel like this person is so, 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 so intelligent that they can also be a little bit critical. Um, not in a snippy, uh, moody way, but I feel like they, when they talk about something, they have already like thought out all the, the they have thought about all the possible outcomes that could result from it. So, you know, they, for example, they might say like, um, they, they might say like, I really, really want to be a teacher, but I know that, you know, teachers don't get paid a lot, especially in the public school system. And then we have to deal with all of those, um, administrative meetings, which really cuts into the time that I have in the classroom. And then on top of that, we're now teaching to, you know, meet some standardized test scores, just we're teaching students just so that they can pass the test. We're not really teaching them life skills or we're not really teaching them properly. So as a result of it, I'm not gonna be a teacher. So it's sort of like that. They have thought about every possible avenue, every possible factor, every possible downfall and pitfalls about a situation. So even though they have a lot of good ideas, they're very, very scared to act. I feel like you're dating this person socially. We have here the Three of Cups. And then I also feel like um, the communication is, there's a lot of internet-based type of communication, text messages, um, emails, and, and you know, fast, swift communications happening between you and this person. And I feel like this person is not 100% sure how they feel about you, okay? They're still a little bit stuck in their predicament. They're gonna free themselves soon and come towards you. But what I do feel is, they see your energies like this, the um you guys are the life of the party like when when you work you work hard when you play you play hard and so i feel almost like this is somebody who might be a little bit more of a homebody they see your energy as the life of the party the magician is what i usually call the life of the party it's somebody who, who um, knows how to talk and mingle with everybody from all walks of life and when they go out and they have fun they really really know how to let their hair down and I feel like because of that, this person feels a little bit intimidated by you because they're not really sure if you are. They might see you as having a lot of options, Seven of Cups. So they're, they're, they need to have, you know, 100% certainty that you are into them before they can commit to you. So that's just so you know. On the other hand, I do see another person here, and this is the uh, King of Pentacles, Earth Sign, Forest Virgo, Capricorn. This is what I feel like... Um, the Mr. or Mrs. Wright, okay? This is like the person that has everything that we look for in a partner. This is somebody that we wanna bring home to mom and dad. They're proper, they're polite, they're financially stable. They're very um, loyal and they're also very calm and um, in a way like bashful when it comes to you know public display of affection okay this is someone who's very prim and proper some of you might be in a relationship with this person and recently it seems like there has been a lot of responsibilities from your end and from their end where you're not able to meet up together as a couple there might have been uh, a few arguments and uh, flare-ups in the relationship recently as well 
Um, but no matter what, you and this person always comes back together. This is somebody where if you've had a really bad day, they will give you a foot massage, okay? You, you, you were on your feet all day. They will, will, you know, go home, pamper you, massage you, and just, you know, um, take care of you. They really, really take care of you. They're not 100% emotionally expressive. And I feel like the characters you're dealing with, this air sign and this earth sign, they're not 100% emotionally expressive. They're not going to tell you, oh, you look very beautiful today. They're not going to tell you, you know, I really appreciate everything that you do. They're, they don't work and operate in that way but just know that you are very very loved and looked after and you know like i said you're a force to be reckoned with so i feel like the people around you really really care about you they just don't express it in a very um verbal way and so you kind of you know with the mercury retrograde uh time frame the best way for me to explain how to navigate the energy is don't listen to what people say watch what people do because the surface communication it, it's all a facade it's all an act it doesn't really mean anything at the end of the day it doesn't even it doesn't even matter it doesn't even have any substance look at what people do and this person i feel like they will do things to show how much they care this person as well they will do things to show you you know um how much you mean to them and so, whatever, I, I feel like, you know, if, if you feel a little bit overwhelmed with work, um, I definitely feel as well that you're, you have to learn to kind of balance out your work life and your, your personal life or even your social life, okay? Like work hard, party hard, or play hard, but you also need to preserve the time to really be there for these people who are also quite important in your life. You have some good things coming in, and I can assure you that hard work does pay off. You're going to start to see snippets of it, the payout, okay? At the end of this month, once we pass that um, the 23rd with the Mercury retrograde energy. So things will be righted again. Just make sure that you're not taking your work home. Make sure that, you know, you leave the, the time and the space for yourself to kind of leave work at work. And then when you get home, that you, you're not constantly thinking about it, okay? Um, let me see if there is anything else here. I feel as well, you know, the, the later part of this month is also a really, really good time for dating and, and getting back out there and socializing for many of you. So if you are, you know, trying to find the right person, I especially see the latter part of the month being really, really good for Mr. or Mrs. Wright, someone who's right up your alley to come into the picture who sees all the, you know, the, the good traits, who sees how much you, how hard you work, how dependable you are. They're going to be coming into the picture and I feel like they're very, very much in alignment with your energy, okay? So I will leave it at that. Uh, Leos, I wish you the very best for the um, latter half of this month. Um, if you are interested in a reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. She is phenomenal. Uh, I highly recommend her. So if you're looking for a reading for yourself or you know someone who is in need of spiritual guidance, I highly recommend that you get a reading from her. I've listed her link below. So if you click on that, it should take you to her scheduling website, okay? Take care of yourself and I'll talk to you soon.